One of the first things you learn about chemical bonding is that covalent bonding is based on the sharing of electrons and specifically the sharing of electron pairs. It takes two electrons to make a covalent bond in the vast, vast majority of cases. But there are two ways we can think about a covalent bond involving two electrons being formed. One is one atom brings an electron to the party, so to speak, and another atom brings an electron to the party. One plus one equals two. But two plus zero also equals two. And another way to create a covalent bond involves donation of both electrons from one of the atoms in the bond and none from the other. And that's going to be our focus and really our starting point for discussing coordination chemistry of the transition metals, since coordinate covalent bonds involving donation of two electrons from one bonding partner and none from the other are ubiquitous in coordination compounds, and generally very, very common in the chemistry of transition metal cations in particular. Transition metal cations are great Lewis acids. They are the zero electron partner in the coordinate covalent bond. On the other hand, nonmetals like nitrogen, oxygen, the halogens that have lone pairs, lone electron pairs, are good Lewis bases. And when you put these together, you get coordinate covalent bonds, right? And the nonmetal is the two electron partner in the bond, if you will. So now we're going to move into discussing coordination chemistry, coordination complexes, and coordination compounds. And let's start with this idea of the 2 plus 0 equals 2 type of covalent bond. It's known as a coordinate covalent or dative bond, and often just to save time, I'll just use the term dative bond. These two terms are, for our purposes, equivalent. A coordinate covalent bond involves the donation of two electrons from one atom, the Lewis base, and zero from the other, the Lewis acid. So an example of a coordinate covalent bond is shown here for hydrated copper 2. When you take a copper 2 salt, copper 2 sulfate, for example, and dissolve it in water, these kinds of bonds form very, very rapidly. Lewis basic water coordinates to the Lewis acidic copper 2 plus cation, and there is a covalent bond created. There's electron sharing here, but both electrons are coming from the nonmetal side, from the oxygen side. Now, multiple coordinate covalent bonds are very common. For example, when you take copper 2 sulfate and dissolve it in water, the copper 2 forms something like six dative bonds with waters as waters surround that Lewis acid. A coordination complex contains a Lewis acidic metal atom at the center and most commonly more than one, multiple copies of Lewis basic atoms that are coordinating to the metal center. Those Lewis basic atoms or groups or molecules are known as ligands. And so a coordination complex contains a Lewis acidic metal atom or metal center, as we'll often refer to it. The metal center is often a cation, but it can also be neutral. Um, and so look out for that. Although the Lewis, uh, the, the metal center is often cationic, neutral metal atoms can also be Lewis acidic in many cases. And so you'll see neutral atoms in coordination complexes at times as well. When the overall complex has a charge, it's called a complex ion. And this is a point we'll return to later. Actually, here just shortly on the slide as we finish the bottom half of this slide. But these charges can be positive or negative. Positive is something that you'll see probably more commonly, right? Because the Lewis basic ligands are often formally neutral and the metal cation is positively charged, so the net charge is positive. But when anionic ligands are involved, we can also get negatively charged complex ions. So you'll actually see both, and we're going to look at examples of both in the bottom half of this slide. So here we have a couple of examples, drawing structures for the complex ions NiNH3 6 2 plus and FeCN6 3 minus. So to start here, let's start with the non-metal side. Let's start with the ligand, because these are Lewis structures that we're familiar with drawing from previous experience with Lewis structures, right? NH3 has a structure that looks like this, and this is the Lewis base. The Lewis basic atom specifically, the atom which we'll call the ligand donor atom here in a couple of slides, is the nitrogen. And to begin drawing the coordination complex, the entire complex, I think it helps to note the overall charge first. The overall charge is 2 plus, so we're going to enclose that entire complex in square brackets and indicate 2 plus to show the overall charge of the complex. The metal ion or atom always goes in the center. And here this is a nickel 2 plus cation 
at the center. And to represent the coordinate covalent bonds, we can either use lines or arrows from the Lewis base to the Lewis acid like this. You'll also commonly just see these drawn as just lines without the arrow, but since we just introduced this idea of the dative bond up here, I wanted to use arrows to show these bonds, and I'll commonly do that as I'm drawing um, coordinate covalent bonds throughout this unit. And this is it. We've drawn the structure. There's no need to worry about formal charge inside the square brackets. We'll learn shortly how to elucidate the oxidation state of the central metal atom based on the overall charge and the charge of the ligands, but within the square brackets, there's no need to indicate, for example, plus two on the nickel center, since the actual distribution of charge may be very, very different. For example, the nitrogen atoms may be sharing some of the positive charge. The second complex is FeCn63-, and here our Lewis basic ligand is the cyanide anion whose Lewis structure is shown right here. The Lewis basic atom in cyanide is 99 times out of 100 the formally negative carbon atom with a lone pair that is readily donated because carbon is not that electronegative, right? We have an overall charge of 3 minus, so we start with those square brackets with a 3 minus in the top right, and we put the Lewis acidic iron atom or cation at the center and surround it with the Lewis basic ligands with an arrow from the Lewis basic carbon atom and cyanide to the Lewis acidic iron center. And here the overall charge is three minus and that comes from the fact that there are six anionic cyanide ligands and the iron at the center has a charge of plus three. Again, in, in general, it's not necessary to show plus three on the iron center since that's understood based on the known charges of the ligands and the overall charge of the complex. So we can leave formal charges out of that structure inside the square brackets. Now each of these complexes has a net charge. So the next natural question is, how do these show up in actual compounds, actual solids, for instance, that we can actually get our hands on? Well, they have to actually pair with counter ions so that the overall charge of the entire compound is neutral. And the result, when you take a charged coordination complex and put it together with a counter ion to make the overall result neutral, is known as a coordination compound. So complex ions, these coordination complexes with net charge, pair with counter ions, to create electrically neutral coordination compounds. So here what we're gonna do is take our charged compounds from the last slide and see how, uh, charged complexes rather from the last slide and see how these pair with counter ions in these compounds here and here to produce electrically neutral um, results, formulas overall. All right, let's start with the cobalt complex. That had a net charge of three plus, and we've got three chlorines here to counterbalance that charge. So the three plus charge on the cationic complex ion is counterbalanced by three anionic chlorides, which are not coordinated to the cobalt. This is a distinction that we're gonna to return to shortly that is actually very important. These chlorides are in a distinct space from the ammonia ligands, the NH3 ligands. The chlorides are not ligands, is the main thing to keep in mind for the time being. In the iron cyano complex with uh, the six cyanide ligands, the overall charge is negative three on the complex ion. And this anionic complex ion, its charge is counterbalanced by three potassium cations, K+. The K pluses are not ligands. They are not coordinated to the iron center. Right? They are counter ions just there really to counterbalance the charge on the complex ion. But these overall electrically neutral formulas are actual solid compounds that we can get our hands on, that we can touch, manipulate, store, dissolve in, you know, in a solution and, and that kind of thing. And so often if we want the complex ion to do some kind of reaction, we take a coordination compound in which that ion appears, dissolve it in solution, add our reactants, and watch the magic happen, so to speak. 